So, I want to talk about SIBO, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, <clears throat> I got diagnosed with SIBO, boy, it's probably been at least over a year now ago. Um, I had taken multiple uh, courses of antibiotics for an infected wisdom tooth that had to be pulled. And to keep a long story short, the antibiotics really screwed up my gut and somehow gave me SIBO. Um, that's basically where you have more bacteria in your small intestine than you're supposed to. And those bacteria in your small intestine create a lot of gases like hydrogen and methane, which can then create a lot of symptoms like bloating, abdominal pain, uh, constipation, diarrhea, unformed stools, smelly stools, smelly gas, uh, and it can lead to autoimmune conditions, lower back pain, um, and just a whole host of terrible symptoms. And really the only way to get rid of SIBO is you have to basically starve those bacteria in your small intestine. And you usually basically do that through diet, a specific diet, and taking antibacterials or antimicrobials. Um, if you go the pharmaceutical uh, route, usually the most well-known prescribed antibiotic is rifaximin. And I actually did take a course of rifaximin, but it did not cure me of SIBO. Um, so these days, I am taking natural oregano oil and grapefruit seed extract. And those two things, combined with following the specific carbohydrate diet, have been very, very helpful for me um, in controlling a lot of the symptoms that I have. Um, it definitely helps with the bloat, uh, helps with the abdominal pain, um, but you really have to stay clear of grains, milk, the liquid milk. Cheeses aren't really bad unless you have a problem with casein, but you want to, um, only get those cheeses that are aged, so like cheddar, because they tend to have 0% lactose in them. And lactose is really what would bother uh, SIBO. But this is all individually based. You might experience problems with eating cheese, so you might not be allowed to eat that. But just sticking to the specific carbohydrate diet, I find, is extremely helpful in handling the symptoms of SIBO. And usually it takes a while, you know. It's going to take maybe a few days to a week before you really start noticing a big improvement. But you definitely will, believe me. Because uh, I had it pretty bad. And it's still something that I'm dealing with today. You know, there's people that have had SIBO for a lifetime. Um, there's other things that could cause a person not to completely um, recover from SIBO. Um, I can't even think of it off the top of my head, but there's a particular... Uh, now I remember. It's the Migrating Motor Complex, or MMC... Sometimes that gets damaged, and sometimes your body isn't able to repair that. I think that's what basically sweeps that bacteria out of the small intestine back into the large intestine, but I could be wrong about that. Um, really, to learn more about these different things, you should watch some videos by Ellison Seebecker. I think that's how you pronounce her name. But she's like a SIBO expert, and uh, she has a website, SIBO Info. Dot com, and I've uh, learned a lot of information and helpful um, stuff on that website and from her videos that have been very helpful for me in, you know, dealing with this condition. Um, it's definitely something that could seriously make you depressed and stressed out if you focus a lot on it and you have negative thoughts. You have to have very a positive mindset when dealing with something like this and accept um, the state that you're in and really try hard to sticking to the diet and taking the specific antimicrobials and antibacterials. That I see, that seems to me 
um, most helpful in dealing with this condition. Um, so my diet for the most part is centered around most days like chicken, eat a lot of chicken thighs with butternut squash. Um, I eat a lot of tuna fish um, with t tomato and cucumber with homemade mayo and I use sea salt and sprinkle sea salt on there. It's very delicious. Um, I've also made like uh, iceberg lettuce tuna wraps. So making up my own homemade mayo with like sunflower oil because the sunflower oil gives it more of that uh, mayonnaise consistency like the store has without it having an overpowering olive oil flavor. Um, that's really the best oil to use when making mayo if you want to make it a lot like the store-bought kind. The, pro the reason why I make my own mayo is because in most store-bought mayos they add sugar and you can't eat sugar when you have SIBO unless you want to experience a lot of bloating and it just makes everything a lot more difficult um, when you're going through terrible symptoms. So um, yeah, uh, I make smoothies. You know, a lot of the fruits are allowed, but you have to be careful because some fruits might aggravate your symptoms. Um, and that's something that you need to watch out for, you know. Um, but for the most part, for me at least, I can eat bananas. Uh, that doesn't seem to be too much of a problem for me. I can eat pineapple. And oranges tend to give me a lot of bloat. Uh, they they tend to give me some real problems. Um, blueberries, strawberries, most fruits are okay. And then for vegetables, uh, I try to cook a lot of the vegetables. And that's the other thing. For fruit and veggies, you really want to try to cook them to break down the fiber. Because if you eat them raw while you have SIBO, it is also very uh, difficult on the system. But as, you know, time goes on, you will heal, and your intestines should get stronger, and your, especially your gut lining. Because, see, when you got SIBO, more than likely, you probably got a leaky gut as well. And so that's why it's best to avoid gluten and grains, and also uh, lactose from milk. Um, just by avoiding the gluten and the dairy from the milk will help you a lot in terms of strengthening your gut and lowering inflammation. See, I was actually tested for a uh, gluten gene, and I came back tested positive for it. So gluten actually is uh, detrimental to me. It's not like I have, I don't have celiac disease or anything like that, but I have a gene that's positive for gluten. So avoiding gluten seems to be helpful for me. Like I notice a lot less inflammation in my joints. Um, and just a lot less pain overall in my body when I don't eat gluten. So it's definitely something that helps me um, and has been helpful in my journey. So what I would really think then for someone that's dealing with SIBO is first go get a breath test done just to make sure you actually have it. Because if you just think you have SIBO and you're following different diets and you're taking different things, it might just be for nothing because unless you can actually know 100% if you have SIBO or not, then don't really mess around with any of this stuff. So I would go to uh, your digestive clinic, wherever that is in your area, and, you know, request a breath test to find out if you have SIBO or not. You know, a lot of the people here on YouTube that are suffering from IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, usually um, IBS is caused by SIBO, but they don't know about SIBO because when they go to their doctor, their doctor doesn't tell them that IBS is caused by SIBO because a lot of the doctors aren't actually aware of SIBO. So that's something that you might want to check out. So again, find a digestive clinic or just ask your doctor um, to order up a breath test for you. And that can tell you whether or not you have SIBO. And if you do, then... You know, there is a company, I haven't tried them myself, but uh, Metagenics sells uh, two supplements, Candibactin AR and BR. You can get them on Amazon, and they've been shown in a study to be very 
um, powerful, actually more effective than Rifaximin at eliminating SIBO. I have yet to use those. Um, like I say, I'm just um, relying right now on oregano oil and grapefruit seed extract in the liquid form from Nutribiotic. Um, and that seems to help a lot. In fact, I was having like diarrhea-like stools for a really, really long time. And as soon as I took grapefruit seed extract, they started to form and become more solid. So it's some really powerful stuff. Um, there's some controversy around grapefruit seed extract, just so you guys are aware. But um, <clears throat> I think, though, my recommendation for most people is or at least what I'm doing that seems to be helping me is follow the specific carbohydrate diet, uh, take some oregano oil or grapefruit seed extract or berberine caps. Berberine is a very powerful antibacterial, antimicrobial that helps also to eliminate a lot of this bacteria. And another thing that's really helpful if you have bloat or pain is taking some peppermint oil capsules. Um, there's some great ones you can get on iron from like nature's place. And then there's one called Heather's Tummy or something like that. Um, that's another powerful thing to do. Uh, taking coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil is very antibacterial. Extra virgin olive oil is antibacterial and good for your intestines. Uh, you really have to take all of these things, you know, every single day and be consistent. And really help lower the inflammation, help starve the bacteria through the diet and taking the herbs, the, the antibacterials. And another thing that is, I've heard helpful that I haven't tried personally is taking a biofilm buster. Because apparently the bacteria form like this biofilm that protects them. So there's a supplement called Claire Labs Biofilm uh, Buster stuff that basically is a bunch of like herbs or whatever that like just bomb the whole biofilm so then the antimicrobials and stuff that you take will go in there and it'll basically destroy up those bacteria a lot easier because they won't be protected by that biofilm. So that's something you want to check out as well. So doing all these things, and really, you have to stay on this long term. This is a long term thing. Like, I'm talking years, you know. It might take you three years to get better. I don't know. Or you might have to just, you know, stick with this to manage the symptoms throughout your life because you may not get better. I don't know. I don't tend to like to think that way. I think it's good to have a positive mindset and think that, you know, you're going to overcome this. But while you're going through it, the best thing to do is be proactive and to manage these symptoms while you have them. And at least that's been helpful for me. Because once you start managing the symptoms and you start getting improvements, that gives you motivation just to continue with this. And really, there is so many good recipes. You're not going to miss out eating grains and things like that. You might at first, um, but trust me, there's some really delicious desserts that you can eat. Um, you can still have hamburgers. You know, I make hamburger and melt provolone cheese on top and then put it in an iceberg lettuce wrap. Um, and I slice a tomato and onion, and it's delicious. You know, I don't even miss the bun. And it's actually healthier for you anyways. So... Again, this is all doable. Um, maybe I can, you know, share some of these recipes um, with you guys. And uh, But yeah, that's the strategy that I would take. And I hope that, you know, anybody else that is suffering with SIBO will get relief very fast. Uh, I know that's been helpful for me. And I just wanted to share that information with you. So please like and subscribe.